In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called understanding the purpose of SI prefixes. Depending on how comfortable you are with the SI system, with the prefixes in the SI system, you might be able to just fill this table out just by looking at the problem and understanding how the prefixes work. So for example, if you see this problem, um, this part of the problem says eight kilometers is equal to how many meters, you might be familiar enough with the kilometer unit that you can just fill that in. And if that works for you, that's fantastic. I'm going to show you how to set this up and work this out if you're unfamiliar with the SI prefixes or the prefixes that are used in the metric system and you're struggling with this problem. So what we want to do is treat each one of these like it's an individual unit conversion problem. That means that we're going to start by writing out the number and the unit that we know. Um, in this case it would be the 3 million liters or for this problem it's going to be the 3,000 milliseconds or the 4 grams or the 8 kilometers. So whatever number has been given to us we'll start by writing out that whole entire number including its unit. 3 million liters. The next thing that we want to do is multiply that number by a conversion factor. And we want to set our conversion factor up so that the unit of this number is down on the bottom of the conversion factor. And the desired unit is up on the top of the conversion factor. Setting it up like this is going to allow that unwanted unit to cancel out mathematically and we'll be left with the unit that we're trying to solve for. Then the next thing you want to do is consult a table of metric prefixes. You definitely have one in your textbook. There's also a table of metric prefixes in the Alex data table section just in case you don't have a textbook handy or you can look it up on the internet. In this table of metric prefixes, you're going to see in some format or another, because they're all laid out a little bit differently, that big M mega is the prefix that represents 10 to the 6. So what does that mean in terms of taking that information and fitting it into uh, a conversion factor? One mega of anything, mega liters, is equal to 10 to the 6 of that same thing. And that's how you're going to fit it into this conversion factor. So the way that we have it set up, that liter unit is going to cancel, and you can plug this into your calculator, or maybe this is math that you can just do in your head, and the answer here is going to be 3 mega liters. We just have to type that 3 in. Let's practice it again. Uh, and again, some people are really comfortable with the metric system, so they can just do this in their head, but this is sort of a tutorial for people that are struggling to figure it out. Maybe you're born in the United States and we don't use these prefixes every day, so it's something that you're not familiar with. So looking at the next problem, we want to start with the number and the unit that was supplied to us. We want to set up a conversion factor that puts that same unit down on the bottom of the conversion factor because we want that unit to cancel out and our desired unit up on the top of the conversion factor. This is a little m, not the same as a big M. And if you look up in a table of conversion factors, you'll see that that little m, milli, is the prefix for 10 to the minus 3. So how we fit that in to this conversion factor, don't just follow the same pattern um, as we did up here. Don't automatically assume it's a one on top. Milli means 10 to the minus 3. That means 1 milli is 10 to the minus 3. And this is going to give us 3 seconds when those milliseconds cancel. So this will be a 3 over here. Let's take a look at our next one. We want to start with the number and the unit that was given to us. That's 4 grams. We want to multiply by a conversion factor that puts that unwanted unit down on the bottom so it cancels and a desired unit will be up on top. Consult a table of prefixes and you'll find centi, little c, that's the prefix for 10 to the minus 2. That means 1 centi of every, anything is 10 to the minus 2 of that thing. Uh, and that's going to give us 400 centigrams. Uh, after the gram units cancel. And then here's our last one. We have eight kilometers and we want to set up a conversion factor with kilometers on the bottom. Our desired unit is the meter, so we want that up on top. If we consult a table of prefixes, K for kilo is 10 to the third. That means one kilometer or one kilo anything is 10 to the third. So this is going to be 8,000 meters. 